Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about database records and identifying database records. So let's get into it. Now, this is one of these, uh, I don't know, I, I hope I'll give you this, this aha moment because this was for me an aha moment. I'll give you some context, so just bear with me, okay? Some context, just a little bit. So when I first started doing Java development back in the day, I was taught just as you will be, and if you're more senior, you already know how databases work. And then you will know about, in say a relational database, this idea of an auto-incrementing ID, an ID column basically. Which is, for the beginners out there, it's just a way, an ID is just a way for you to to know, to be able to find a record in a database. And auto-increment means that as you add records to your database, the database will automatically generate the, a number, or rather the next number, it's, think about it from this perspective, one, two, three, four, five, six, so, and so forth and so forth, and just auto-increment every time you add something to the database, the ID. That's the basic structure of how a relational database works. And there are other databases out there who do it in a slightly different way, but this is the very boilerplate standard way of doing so. And when I first was introduced to this, I thought it was great. Simplest thing in the world, and I started working with it, and working and working and working. And as I grew in my role, as well as the, in these days I was just a student programmer, I came across this, this thing I hadn't really understood because I was reading through the different packages and the libraries of Java and being all nerdy and trying to figure out, okay, what package is doing what and figuring out all these different things, right? And then I found this class, UUID, this library. And so I asked my, my teachers about it and they said, well, a, U, a, UID, a UID is just a way to create a unique identifier, a universally unique identifier, or at least with nowadays it's, I understand that it's not a hundred percent unique, well statistically it should be, but anywho, and they explained so this is just a way for you to completely uniquely identify when some, something, whatever it was, you just create the, something that is in this universe that we all live in is going to be unique, or at least in the system that you're building. And I thought, okay, that's kind of cool, but when would I use something like this? Feels a little bit odd, because, I mean, the only time you really need a ID is for a database record, like an object, a class, something like that. You, you need to identify, say, a user or, say, a product, something like that. Hmm. Didn't really know what to do with it. And then I started working and started building my first applications and everything was fine. I really loved this auto increment situation where, or rather this, this approach, right? It was very standard. Until I started working with distributed systems. Now, what is a distributed system? Well, a distributed system is a system that is made up about, from more than one single server. So, in a traditional, very, and this is where you're most likely going to start out if you're a beginner, you're going to start out with one server, one client, in other words, a mobile device or a browser or something like that, and one database, most likely. So these three together are going to make up your application. And this is very standard. This is how I was taught how to do programming, and this is how most developers start out learning programming. But when you get to a distributed system, which is more common when you get to a little bit of scale, the relationship could be that you have several servers, like different applications, that are behind a so-called reverse proxy or a load balancer that simply takes their incoming request, a gateway is also a common term, and sends the request to the correct place. And if they are all using the same data, if all these services are using the same database, everything's fine. But if you have more than one database, that's when the issues start coming. So 
what happens then is that you now have to synchronize this auto incrementing number. Why? Well, if you think about it, if database A is getting records, they will start at one, two, three, four, five, six. And if database B also starts getting records that are supposed to represent the same thing, and they are not talking with each other so that they don't know which ID they are on, the second the database B is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Why is this a problem? Well, this is a problem because if you now go to any of these databases, you will have duplicate IDs. You will have two records that have the same number to identify that record. That's a problem. And this is where universal IDs or UIDs become useful. And when I, I for me, it just clicked because then if, if, if you add a field for UID, your own personal field for a dis when you run things in a distributed system, you will actually find that you can have a unique record that is unique over your entire system. And this becomes extremely important when you want to be able to, to have multiple databases and records that may live in several places at, at the same time. It's great. Now, don't go now, just hear me out now. Don't go and throw UIDs at like absolutely everything because they are not free to generate and they are not necessary if you just have a single database. But as soon as you start sharding out things, they become very useful. And I've found that, especially when we, I do event sourcing or event sourced or event sourced based programming, it, it also becomes a very useful thing because there you really want to treat everything as a completely unique thing and you want to be able to port it to different databases and so forth. So the mentality that I developed around this when I would pick using a UID for my identifier as opposed to just using an out auto incrementing number is as I said, if I know that my application is going to live in one database instance, which is as I said, a small scale this is very common. At large scales, it's not so common. If that's the goal, I'm just building something simple, then that's good enough. But if I'm building something much more complicated where I might have to do data migrations, I might have to move records around, I might have to take one entire database and put it in another database with some other data, then I start to think about UIDs. Because, as I said, if the ID field is not unique, on both sides, you can find yourself in a collision situation where multiple records have the same ID and that's not good. An ID needs to be completely unique all the time when you're looking for things in a database. So that's when a UUID or UID, whatever you want to call it, becomes very useful. And hopefully you will have a slight aha moment as well, because it was a big aha moment for me. And I think that now I kind of understand when one makes more sense than the other. Have a great day.